Hello, uh, this is uh, Ben Coombs. I'm campaign manager for serial herbicides and I work for Bayer. I'm John Cousins and I'm a weed biology and management specialist at NIAB. Hi there, I'm Philip Wright, independent advisor on soils and cultivations. Hi, John and Philip. Uh, very welcome to uh, this, this recording of a, a podcast and audio for, for, for Bayer. Um, yeah, I think it's um, we're kind of coming to the, the end or end is in sight of a very unusual season. It, I think I'm right in saying it's been just about the wettest autumn and winter on record, followed immediately by the driest spring. So I guess the first place to start um, is, um, given that we're thinking about weed control, is what has been the effect of this really wet autumn, winter and really dry spring on weed control this season from your perspective? I guess I'll have a go answering that. I, th I think the reality is it, it, it's just a year where reflecting how really difficult decision making has been on farm, every single field and sometimes, you know, different parts within a field are in a different situation right now. You know, we've got a combination of of did people drill early? Did they get drilled at all? Maybe they, they drilled a crop in the autumn uh, and under really difficult conditions and it lacked the vigour that it normally would and then overlaid on that you've got a range of people who um, applied pre-emergence herbicides early to early drill crops and really didn't get good results because the conditions were so difficult um, people who drilled crops but were then unable to spray them at the timings where they want to um, people who drilled crops and perhaps because they were worried about crop effect um, either reduced or, or removed elements of their pre-emergence herbicide program. So every different combination of all those factors seems to be at play. Incredibly variable picture out there. It's always the case to some extent that um, black grass in particular is really bad in places and other people feel that they've done very well this year. And I think this year is is more so than previous years in terms of that really mixed picture. And then, of course, we fell through that, stumbled out of the autumn into the spring. And then you've got a whole range of, of challenging decision making in, making in the spring. You know, wh when were your opportunities to drill? Were you forced into a spring crop and perhaps you, you hadn't set out the, the conditions in, in the field to, to drill one? And then what did you do in terms of grass weed management in that spring crop? And, and Philip, I think... From your perspective, if 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 John's focused on maybe what's you know above the ground in terms of, of, of weeds, what's your perspective of what's going to have happened below the ground with soil structure and um, what will be the effects on on soil structure of the, of the season we've just had? Yeah, it's a good question, Ben. I, I think we we we've gone into this particular um, autumn, winter, and now into spring uh, as as an extreme wet followed by dry, but an extreme wet the previous year, we were basically the other way around and we were we were extreme in the dry sense. So so any any system that a farmer has been operating has been tested to both extremes, really. And, and it certainly showed showed up the, 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 the strengths and weaknesses of such systems. And, and I think it's tested a lot of farmers. Um, resolve to be able to to be flexible and, and adapt according to the conditions. Um, you know, we had a, a situation this spring now where um, possibly we farmers were, were were faced with the question: Do I do I loosen the ground and 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 throw everything nearly away that I've tried to prepare in terms of seed beds to minimally disturb? Do I then go and pull all that lot up um, and 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 throw that part of it away just to be able to get a crop drilled um, and even then where farmers possibly chose to wait that bit longer um, they might have actually found that far better you know just to and a, a number rang me up a great number rang me up and said well do you think I should pull pull the ground up or should I leave it and and go in and I, I think for me the answer was have you tried the drill you know have you tried it yet and or don't bother to put seed in, just go and put it in a corner of the field or an area of the field that you would say is reasonably representative and see how it goes. And, and oh, a good 50 or 60% didn't ring back after that uh, straight away. And in, in the end, they rang back and said, well, it didn't actually work too bad. And I'll put the seed in and carried on drilling. And I'm pleased I did. 
and in hindsight they were very pleased they did those some of them that lifted the ground and let it dry out then we didn't get any more rain so that that was equally a challenge for the establishing crop um but for, for me i think in all cases the, the the soils that were in better condition structurally uh, and and certainly soils that were in better condition uh from a resilient point of view and and, and organic matter point of view those were slightly higher on that scale tended to be somewhat easier somewhat more forgiving and and i think that that season two years ago that was extremely dry and put some serious cracks in those soils um set the soil up for taking those extreme wet wet periods weeks and months uh, of last autumn and winter i think if we hadn't had that the previous year we'd have probably not been in such a good position mm. uh, yeah i think it's it, it kind of then draw draws into thinking about if we if we then draw the line under this season um it's maybe so some have been been saved by some um some good structuring previously but undoubtedly this this pre this season as you've said has thrown some challenges at at um at soils and crops um question for, for both is really what harvest is just kind of around the corner it's not too long until um the, the combines will begin rolling um what what sort of planning what sort of thought processes should be going through farmers minds at the moment to start beginning um for, for autumn 20 um so the the coming drilling window um and um and any cultivations before that now well i think if i if i sort of carry on on the theme i was just just on and then let John come in on the on the sort of husbandry side as well but certainly from my point of view it would be good practice uh, make sure the kits fettled up ready to go uh, if you're chopping and spreading and returning residues make sure that everything's right on that score that you've got a good set of blades that they're well that they're well set that they're well adjusted uh, so that we start off right um, I think in terms of good practice as well make sure that um, your tire pressures are appropriate safely minimal let's call it that I appreciate that there are some compromises um, and I think then get the spade out uh, now and, and use the the roots that are there uh, as your indicator really uh, they're going to tell you have they got down efficiently are there are there layers that are wetter are there layers where roots have been held up if that's the case that should that should flag up um, a concern at the moment uh, and although we've still got to be mindful we've got some weather to go before now on harvest then we can we can start to make a plan certainly we can start to put ticks in fields boxes that are, are looking okay um, focus the mind you know go for a start into a good area on each field that'll give you a benchmark and a feel for it and then go into let's say visibly more challenged areas in terms of the crop that's growing dig down and check what the issues are it might not be a soil constraint but if it is then um, I'd be very surprised if the problem was that deep to be honest I, I think you might find the majority of the problems are in the top um, 10 15 centimeters 20 max but probably a lot less than that Thanks, and so so it's a uh, start doing the 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 mapping out in in minds of what what's coming up, where problems might lie. Um, yeah, absolutely. And 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 John, from your your perspective, with the thinking about the the crop husbandry, uh, I guess drilling dates, um, uh, kind of those sorts of decisions for this autumn. What what would your perspective be um, coming going ahead into autumn 2020? I mean, I guess there's an element of, of, as Philip says, just map out where your weed problems are right now um, uh, and use that in the planning for next season. I mean, I'd say, you know, for, for in terms of grass weed management, fundamentally, you always have two choices. If you've had um, a significant number of grass weeds in a, in a crop you've it's always been the case you've had two choices and one is to deal with the the seeds now and prevent seed return through crop destruction or or hand weeding roguing whatever or it is to allow those seeds to shed to harvest the crop and and deal with them in the next crop and you know different people depending on on where they are in their cropping and 
perhaps the crop is more valuable now than perhaps it might have been in different seasons because of the rarity of, of you know, good winter wheat crops, for example, in some areas. We may, may see less crop destruction going on, but that does mean we really need to focus on on managing the weed seeds in, in the next season. And part of that is going to be, I mean, I, I, I know a lot of us, have, a lot of people have talked about there being a bit of a bounce, a bit of a, a, a rush to heart to drill crops next year because of what a, a really difficult campaign it was last autumn. I'm not sure there are that many people who've got significant black grass problems who are actually going to do that, to be honest. I, I think it's so embedded in the psyche now that, that, that trying to drill cereal crops in the, in the first half of September, you know, in the middle of September, when you know that you're under a lot of pressure from grass weeds and you won't get the control that you want to from the preams and you have a very large population in the crop. I think that knowledge is, is so embedded now that I, I'm not sure we, we perhaps will see that enormous bounce that there'll be a great rush to drill. Um, so optimum drilling dates, bear that in mind, uh, obviously, mapping out where the problem is is going to give you a hierarchy of, of what fields are going to be most problematic where you've got least leeway next year mm. um, yeah i suppose i guess the, the principle is that the fundamentals haven't changed in that um delaying drilling is a positive for, for yeah. grass control it brings with it other challenges as as as, as last autumn really highlighted but um, you know, with, with actually getting crop crop drilled, and so um, it's it's an important consideration to consider. Well, uh, drilling earlier gives more surety of getting crop in the ground, of course, but it brings with it the um, increased likelihood of additional black grass, and so that's a uh, you know consideration that needs to be thrown into the mix. And um, I think that's where your your monitoring of where the problems are this year comes in, isn't it? That you're going to have more leeway in some fields than you've got in other fields. But I think you know growers with significant levels of black grass will you know will be all too aware that there are some scenarios where if they try and drill an early drilled cereal crop next year, they just will not get a crop. I'm not sure there'll be a, a universal rebound, but yes, it, it's really focused our minds on how challenging it is to use delayed drilling as a key plank in black grass management and gets us to focus on some of the other areas, I suppose. Um, I think then just focusing in on the, the, the window that could be there after, that will be there after, after harvest and before drilling in autumn 20. It's really, Philip, one kind of really, yeah, like appreciate your, your comments on because it strikes me that there's, there's possibly going to be more more to focus on in that window than there has been in recent years because of the effects of, of, of this season um, and, and, and the, the results of that, that monitoring that um, you'd recommend farmers are, are doing around, around now. So what would your kind of advice be on, on prioritising tasks during the, um, the post-harvest window, post-harvest pre-drilling for getting soils into a fit state? Are there some key tasks that really need to be um, achieved quickly and, and, and first and um, how, how would you kind of structure that that window of getting all the operations done that need doing? It, we have to start really with part of what we've already discussed that um, if, if we can if we can make the, the, the harvest operations as efficient as possible um, there are a lot of various it depends on here but for example if it, are, are you removing straw are you going to keep the straw there but uh, clearly, if straw has been removed, if 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 there's a an option to put back FYM or put put uh, something else in, into the mix there, then keeping um, structure damage, keeping damage to a minimum anyway, is going to all of this is going to to reduce the the hassle and the onerous task to come. So again, I, I think whatever we can do to to control where we traffic on the on on the field, to to keep that to to, to known areas to bare minimum, uh, then within limits of of what we're what we're doing ahead of, of of establishing the next crop, then that's a that's the most important starting point, uh, prevention rather than cure, uh, and then 
really it's it's prioritizing which fields almost working backwards from the answer um with with john's points he's made quite rightly on on delaying drilling and and, and knowing the fields that we've we've got to focus on then you can start to work backwards from from that answer to know what time you've got uh, and and then what what you've got to do um clearly making a stale seabed uh if is 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 an option if we're going to make a stale seabed to try and stimulate some grass weeds we we, we in an ideal world need a, a low dormancy situation um i think keeping as shallow as we can possibly go uh within limits of 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 good um stale seabed again keeps the powder dry um going any deeper than necessary is 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 never good anyway um i think i think if if we're going to do any form of of soil movement ahead of drilling then the amount of disturbance that we want to put in wants to be a greater level of disturbance earlier on so that when we do eventually drill we are putting less disturbance in at that point with the the commercial crop drilling operation for example we're putting less disturbance in there so if if, if we're going to give some stimulation to black grass to grow we want to be doing it sooner uh, and, and to a greater level uh, than when we actually drill uh, and that would also apply to spring spring drill as well. But um, and again, I, I, I think if you can work to preparing your final seed bed, particularly with minimum disturbance, if you're going to work to preparing your final seed bed as part of the early process of a stale seed bed pass, um, if you leave it in a, a sensible state, level enough, right enough to drill, then you give yourself more options going forward. Uh, you know, you're, you're not sort of back end loading the actions that you, you you're doing to to create the optimum condition for establishing your commercial crop. Because as John said quite rightly, the competitiveness of that crop is is vital. So mm -hmm. it's ultimately a, the aim has got to be do the stuff that's right for that following crop. If at the same time we can then uh, do what's necessary to stimulate the black grass at the same time. Um, acknowledge that we're trying to manage the soil from a point of view of slug and, and pest control. Um, giving a, a, a shallow amount of tillage can help the slug control clearly, depending on what was the previous crop. Uh, so there's all those sort of aspects can come in. Um, but are probably the overriding factor is having determined what repair is needed, then achieve that with as if, 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 if any at all, achieve that with as little possible disturbance as we can and certainly aim to, 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 to tail that disturbance off the nearer we get to drilling that next crop, the commercial crop. Uh, thank you. That's uh, really yeah, good, important lessons. Um, to confuse that or maybe to add another angle into it, John, um, one question that I think is, is probably worth then throwing into the mix here is, is the black grass, of course, itself sensitive to uh, cultivation? The schools have thought, depending on, is it is it best to leave actually leave the black grass on the surface or should should it be uh, cultivated immediately after harvest? Um, yeah, what, what would your kind of view be and, and what are the kind of thinking and, and thinking points um, for the question of is it right to be cultivating immediately after harvest? I mean, I, I think the reality is there's not one answer to the question. I, I mean, my sort of favourite throwaway line when I when I talk about black grass is if a farmer wants to know whether they've got a good, good agronomist, ask them what cultivations they should be doing and when. And if they give them an answer, you need to sack the agronomist and get another one. <laughs> because it depends. The answer is it depends. And and particularly with this issue of of should you, you know, should you what time should you leave try and leave grass weed seeds and black grass seeds on a soil surface and let them um suffer mortality because of the difficult conditions that there are on that surface, particularly if you're obviously taking all the crop residues away and leaving them uncovered, or should you just get straight in after harvest and try and work the surface of the soil? to try and stimulate them to germinate. And the answer genuinely is it depends. And we've seen uh, in analysis of old data and specific trials where we wanted to look at this question, you get diametrically opposed answers depending on the season. So if you have a very, if you have dry conditions, 
through harvest uh, and after harvest. So you've got these dry, harsh conditions on the soil surface. Two things. First of all, your your grass seeds, which are not really uh, designed to be persistent in those sort of conditions, will suffer high levels of direct mortality. And whatever cultivations you would want to do probably wouldn't work very well anyway. So that, in that scenario, you leave, I would say, leave well alone. You're not going to do a very good job with whatever cultivation you want to do. And, and the weed seeds uh, are, are sitting on that really dry, parched surface. You know, with lots of high levels of UV, maybe they're they're, they're um, some wetting up and drying, and you'll get a lot of of mortality. On the other hand, if you've got conditions that we do sometimes get in the summer in the UK, where that month is is wet, difficult harvest perhaps, uh, and you know seeds could survive perfectly well on the surface of the soil after harvest. There's plenty of moisture, um, then by all means cultivate and try and get as much to germinate as possible and i think that that really the answer really has got to be to a lot of these questions and philip alluded to it as well you know what cultivation should i do and when and the answer is it depends the answer is always it depends um we know that we've got different conditions post drilling and wet and dry and and people really have got to use those fundamental pieces of knowledge and make their own decisions or or or, or advisors have, have got to go through that process for themselves yeah i think i think one of the themes actually that and it was philip philip used the, the phrase of think with the end in mind and think of the result that you you, you have and, and that applies to the the, the cultivations and, and structuring the soil in a physical sense and um, the interaction of the soil with with black grass in the biological sense. I think that's actually probably one of a, a really good message to take out for, for all of this when looking ahead to the next growing season is, is think about that result in mind, do some prioritization um, and then kind of work through plan plans of action depending on each individual field's needs. So um, yeah, imp really important lessons um, on, on that side. Another kind of principle that, that Philip's on, and I think it's worth bringing out, that, that we want to form the seedbed, which is going to form the surface of the growing crop as soon as possible and let it evolve and let whatever weed seeds are readily germinable germinate and be killed off with that pre-drilling glyphosate and do that, you know, in good, and that's as true for spring crops as it is for, mm. for winter crops. Mm. You want to make that surface and, and let it evolve uh, naturally rather than kind of forcing it and, and cultivating, making one surface, and then just before you drill, you mix it all in and make another surface, which is going to be the, the, the one that, that's in the growing crop. Um, Philip, I wonder if, if, if you had any, any comments to make on how cover crops could be used to, to help with some of the soil issues, which may be um, present in places following last, last autumn. Yeah, Ben, I, I, think, I think speaking really is a poacher turned gamekeeper here. I've spent 28 years of my life designing machinery to rip soils to bits, so I'm probably very well qualified to to, to talk about this. But I, I, I think for me, um, metal really is, is a means to an end. And, and you rightly bring the subject up of, of cover crops and, and using basically roots to grow through the soil at all times, because at the end of the day, roots and growing in the soil, biological and natural activity is the stuff that will actually give you good structure. And, and, and whilst metal uh, can be used to, to, to help that, it is very much a means to an end. And that's really the way I look at it these days. Um, it, it's, it's judging how roots are doing it for you and, and do they need a help uh, to, to be simplistic. Uh, if, and I, I, I think ahead of a, a spring crop, um, the more I look, the more I learn. Um, it, it, at the end of the day, you, you don't ever leave soil fallow and bare if you can possibly avoid it. Uh, always try and have something growing in there. Um, and, and as a result of that then, that growing crop can can help to draw the moisture out as as inevitably things wet up um, and and as I'm sure everyone's aware of and certainly I'm, I know you're aware of um, if, if you look at a, a field surface as it evolves through 
a growing season, um, the weather creates you in the end a lovely little surface tilt normally. Okay, you get extremes and the extreme weather and water can start to destabilize the, the surface, but the more fibers, the more natural um, resilience you build into that soil surface, the better it gets. And so that that weathering action, that wetting and drying action on any soil other than a pure sand will, will generally create you as a shrinking and swelling action locally on the surface. It'll start to create you little fine aggregates. And if you've got more stabilizing through roots and biological activity, you get better binders that are that are exuded, that are there, that, that help to hold those little aggregates and, and keep them into water stable uh, form, you eventually develop tilt basically. Um, and then we can use that tilt to drill into without so much work and much effort. And then, and the whole thing relies on growing some. Um, I, I think one, one kind of final area to touch on then is really, um, it, it picks up on a lot of the themes um, that you've just spoken about there. There, Philip. But if I go to, to to John first, because this is something that uh, we've we've discussed before, and it's the um, idea that actually one of the key features of, of a cover crop, as, as Philip has, has sort of alluded to, there is to prepare the ground for the next crop, for the spring barley, maybe for the but for the spring cereal. I'm going to play devil's advocate um, on, on this occasion because we we we're actually in a project we're working on together. Um, with um, uh, some uh, some partner farmers, um, the Blackgrass Tower Sports in Action uh, ran um, an approach where we we looked at using cover crops in a in a field um, in Huntingdon, um, doing a trial one field one area of the field without cover crop, one with, um, and actually in this case um, the it, 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 while the soil appeared to be in better uh, better condition for drilling at the time of drilling in the cover crop area. Um, it, it looks like the cover crop drilled spring barley has fared a bit worse. So, I mean, are there any kind of comments that you'd make on why that might be the case um, and how that might need to evolve and, and, and things that are idiosyncratic perhaps to last season that might explain that? I think to be, you know, an, an honest analysis of what we've done at, 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 the, at the farm that's in the, the task force uh, would be that we've seen some of the benefits in terms of soil structure we've also to some extent seen some of the worst risks of growing a cover crop in terms of the crop that follows it itself and what's been really interesting from my point of view is a real willingness of the grower there to to build on those positives but not throw the baby out with the bathwater. and i think what what we what we saw in fact is uh, a cover crop that, although it did struggle in the autumn, actually got going. And in the end, we got quite a lot of above ground biomass through the winter and into the spring. And it wasn't sprayed off until a few weeks before uh, the crop itself was drilled, which left a lot of that biomass um, for the drill to have to cope with. Um, some of the elements of the mix there, I think, were probably with hindsight, if you know, given the, the, the lack of gap between spraying off and and drilling the crop perhaps could have been could have been different. Mm -hmm. um, but nevertheless, despite the fact that we've had because of this interference of this large biomass with the drill operation, mm -hmm. the effect that we've had on the, the spring barley that's followed, you can really see the, the benefit that it that there's been to the soil structure that underlies it. And I think there's an opportunity there, as I say, to, to capture those positives uh, and to avoid the negatives. And I think in terms of avoiding the negatives, well, I th there are two lessons in, in practice for that particular grower. The first of which I think is, 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 just, is just simply to destroy the cover crop a bit earlier. It's enormously tempting to see all that green biomass and think, well, it must be doing a fantastic job. Why on earth would I want to spray it off around Christmas, early in the new year and, and lose it all in inverted commas? Um, but experience has been that we, we even with cover crops from an autumn cro sown crop um, in front of a spring sown crop, even with cover crops which are destroyed pre-Christmas, around Christmas and early in the new year, you still see those benefits without the challenge of having to drill. And I think the other lesson is to perhaps take the oat component of the cover crop mix out and replace it with something that 
might play a slightly different role because my feeling was that it was that element which was um, being particularly problematic in terms of the drilling. Um, I think that's really, really informative. Thank you both. Really, really interesting. I hope every um, everyone listening find, found that um, very interesting. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll draw, draw it to a close. Thank you for your comments. Um, we really appreciate it. And I totally agree. Here is to a um, successful and maybe more simple uh, autumn 2020 drilling uh, and 2020-2021 season. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you're more than welcome. Thank you.